Hello everyone, welcome back to Sawyer Studios and today we are doing a review on a set that I got back in January. I actually bought this set down in Florida. Um, but yeah, I'm doing a review on the bookshop that came out this year. I was super excited for this set to come out. Um, this was just an amazing looking module build. I usually don't get module buildings, um, but it, this one was just, I don't know, this was different. Uh, it had just such a cool, I mean, the bookstore and then like the nice bay window and the nice little house and just everything about it was so adorable and I just, I had to get it. Um, just a quick backstory on this set. Uh, apparently, Lego sets do not count as carry-ons. They just count as items on a plane. I was able to bring this back in the Lego bag like it wasn't like I was able to take that on plus a bag. I don't know. Fun fact. <laughs> so I was actually uh, when I bought this set down in Florida, I was on Corral tour with the Roberts Corral and I was like, how am I going to get this back? And I was like, well, there's got to be a way because I bought it and like I'm not going to I'm like people buy stuff all the time and take it on planes. So like I got it back here and I built it and let me tell you this is pretty awesome this module building is um, pretty much broken up into two uh, different buildings um, the bookstore and then just the regular house this has 2,504 pieces I want to say this was retail the retails were only $200 I think it was just $200 it might have been 250 I don't really remember. Um, set number 1027 now. And it's for ages 16 and up. It is an expert set. Um, not quite sure if I call this expert. Like it was... I think I think 16 and up is the proper price range. Uh, not price range, but age range to give this set. Lots of detail and really cool stuff to look into. So let's get into the set. But first, let's get into the minifigures. First minifigure is the bookstore keeper lady. She has a pretty crazy look to her with an, a massive amount of hair. I think they're implying that she's single because there's another character or minifigure in the set that I'll get to in a moment. But as you can see, she's wearing a very nice, some nice uh, like baby blue pants, a nice pink cardigan with a pink undershirt and the button detailing. Pretty simplistic. Every minifigure in the set has a double-sided face except for the uh, grandfather. Um, so if we take off her massive amount of hair, my goodness, look at that. Turn her face around. This is the uh, this is her double-sided face. I, I, I think she's sleeping. I think that's her sleeping face because she comes with a bed. So I'm assuming um, if you want to just uh, lay her down in the bed and have her pretend to be sleeping and all that, you can do that with that face. So the reason why I think she's single is because this guy comes in the set and he has flowers. And I think that he even tells in the instruction booklets to like set them up in the back, get them on like a coffee date or something. He has a nice little tan tie with some very snazzy suspenders with a red shirt, some nice uh, clay brown pants. And you can see the suspenders go on to the back, which is pretty cool. Uh, what I think will have been awesome, but I mean, I know Lycra doesn't do this because, you know, they have the, the back and the front printing and arm printing. If they did suspender printing over the shoulders, I think that'd be a whole new level of Lego minifigures, shoulder printing. <laughs> Not quite sure if we're ever going to see that. And as you can see, here's the flower he has for her. And he has some nice combed hair, um, nice big white smile, and he also has a double-sided face, just like everyone else. And this is sort of just like a nice little smirk smile that he's got going on. Here is the uh, grandfather, 
uh, and he does not come with a double side face. Um, so, yeah, it's just that. He has some nice sideburns, beard, and general mustache. I like, I like this look on him. So it got like a slight lumberjack look with this plaid button-up shirt. Um, the plaid continues on to the back, and he's got just some plain gray legs for the gray pants. I kind of wish Lego chose something other than gray, because the gray kind of, I don't know, there's feels like there's too much gray with the gray hair, the gray facial hair, and the gray pants. Maybe like, I don't know, some dark blue or something. But, you know, overall, pretty good figure. The next figure that comes with the set is his wife, his lovely wife. Uh, we have some very big buttons right here on her over jacket with an undershirt, nice bl dark blue pants. As you can see, that pattern continues on the other side with that nice uh, leather look to it. Slego did a very good job. She has glasses, as you can see, and lovely hair. If we take the hair piece off. That is her other, um, her other face. It's not very different, <laughs> to be fair. You have this, and then you have that, and there's honestly, like, I can barely tell. I can barely tell that there's anything, that there's any difference. Maybe, like, the eyebrows, and that is it. <laughs> the eye expression. Um, so, yeah, that is her other double-sided face and finally we have their grandson I believe maybe like giving his grandparents a little visit over the weekend uh, this is a cute little figure he comes with a brick-built airplane let me just take that off of him so I can show you comes with a nice little propeller piece the wings the uh, the back it's really big for him like this is a really big plane compared to the size of this little minifigure, but it's a, it's a pretty nice small airplane. If we look closer at him, uh, he has a nice little scarf on. Uh, he has like a banana logo on the shirt. I'm, I'm not sure exactly like <laughs> what's with these banana logos because I've seen it on several minifigs. That's like a inside that's something to do with Lego and stuff, please comment down below because that's actually something I do not know about. But yeah, he has the banana logo on his shirt, his undershirt with some nice plaid button up uh, over it, short dark green legs. Turn around to the back, he has the rest of the plaid right there. So very nice little minifigure. Uh, you saw his, his nervous face on him. Uh, the reason why he has a nervous face is because he gets his airplane stuck up in the tree, as I was showing a moment. Uh, but his other face is a very happy, smiling face. And as you could see, he did come with uh, he did come with a nice green scarf piece, and also a very nice blue beanie. So let's break these two uh, buildings apart so we can really see them uh, separately so as you can see they're connected by these below so pretty simple pretty much like every modular building um they have that on either side so that you can connect them to your other modular buildings as well let's take a look at the bookstore first first of all I have this lovely ladder that technically goes with this set so i'll leave that over here for now we have this great birch tree using these different Technic designs right here, which I think look amazing. These green and orange and yellow leaves really spruce up the place. I uh, get this nice little bluebird's nest up here with a cute bird that is adorable. Um, they actually use hot dog pieces for the fencing right here, which I think that is <laughs> amazing. Let me give a close up. You got some nice leaves on the ground. As you can see, those are the hot dogs um, <laughs> to make the fence around this lovely birch tree with the black and the white. Very cool. You can see we do have a nice little bookshelf out 
front with some books and stuff. I love how Lego does books um, <laughs> because they really up the design quality. As you can see, that says Once Upon a Time. There is a book in the window for display for sale, and it is called Moby Brick. <laughs> you can see a huge 2x2 two two brick leaping out of the water. I think that's hilarious. Um, next, we have like the very nice green translucent pieces, like designs and the cobblestone designs around the windows, which I think is great. We have the lantern with the birch books. These are sticker pieces. Um, and that is what the title is. Very convenient. There's a birch tree outside of birch brooks. Uh, birch books, sorry. Uh, we have the lovely windows and then even more windows. And just the overall aesthetic of the building is very, very lovely. So let's go top down so we can take this top part off. We take this off. This actually comes apart in two separate pieces, if you wish, which I probably should have done that first. So you can take just the back off to reveal the back of the uh, building. And you have this lovely bed for your bookstore lady, the pillow, the headrest, the blankets. You can put her feet right there and she can lay down and sleep. You can see the nice green felt uh, wooden stairs going down that way. And then over here, which I think is one of the most, the best selling points of this set, is that you get a small little chameleon. And let me take him out of his cage, or just pick up the cage and show you. Look how absolutely adorable that is. That is like the cutest Lego animal. I have ever laid my eyes on. That is honestly one of the biggest reasons I got this set was just for this little chameleon dude. He is so freaking adorable. Anyway. So, yep, he can go right there, right by the bedside. Put this piece back on, and then we can take off the... Oh, one second. <laughs> Okay, sometimes the chameleon, let me see, probably, there we go. You can't place the chameleon too close to the edge or else this top won't go on. There we go. Now let's take off the entire top. We get to the second floor. As you can see, you have these stairs that continue down to this floor. Down here you have the not lovely grandfather clock. Even You even have the little... Uh, that um, weight that goes back and forth. You have a nice coffee mug on this table. Uh, you have this lovely lamp with a uh, nice green rug and a Lazy Boy recliner. And this actually reclines, as you can see. This can go in the upright position or you can put it back in that position. So that works lovely. Um, we do have a door that leads to the outside. And as you can see, there are love, two lovely seats right here and a coffee mug on the table so that your bookstore lady and guy in the suspenders can have a little date on that porch area. You also have a nice window going by the stairs right here that can also open. If we continue around this, you can see stairs going even further down into the store. So let's take off this next level. And here are the stairs. There's a small little bookshelf right here on the top with a nice little balcony in the bookstore. And you can even take this part off. This disconnects very easily. And there you have it. The rest of the stairs. And then you have um, a shelf of books right there. And then you even have uh, some books right here. A way taller bookshelf. And this is a really intricate designed uh, bookshelf and I really like how those you know you have some books sticking out you have like the bindings which is really great let me give you a closer look on this Moby Dick book piece or Moby Brick book piece there you are 
really cool little thing that they added in there. For a bookshop, um, I mean, it is pretty small and crammed. You only get two sh shelves of books on the bottom floor. And then on that uh, top floor, you did get uh, a very small amount of books. So it is what it is. Uh, I wish Lego may have, you know, I don't know, maybe put like a shelf of books right here behind the counter. Uh, I think that would have been a nice little touch. And I think that would have, that would have worked just like right there. Of course, I guess it would be hard to place someone in there. You do have the cash register, some stuff right there, and I'm not quite sure what all of that is supposed to be. And the cash counter does have some nice designs beneath it as well. So you can take your lovely bookstore lady. She's behind the cashier register, and she's ready to cash you out. I love the floor in that this bookstore gives with the different colors of brown and everything. It just looks super amazing. As you can see, we do have a step right there to go into the bookshop. Yeah, that's practic practically uh, Birch Books. So let's move on to the other modular building in this set, which is the lovely lovely little blue house on the corner it is absolutely adorable this ladder is actually stored in the basement of this set which i will show but pretty much the purpose of the ladder is to bring it out set it up here and have the grandpa or the grandma climb up the ladder uh because the little boy minifigure has gotten his plane stuck in the tree so you can just like set it in the tree they can climb up and try to reach it and get it out that's pretty much what the ladder's function is. This is actually a pretty nice foldable ladder. So, yeah, that's the ladder. Uh, as you can see, it does come with a white light post, lamp post, or whatever you'd like to call it. Uh, we do have some nice uh, designs right here beneath the bay window, and the bay window just looks absolutely beautiful, filling in those gaps well. Uh, this is house 107. And we have some very nice fancy railings going up these uh, lovely steps right here with some nice flowers and the flower bed out front. As you can see on the sidewalk, you do have like these little like graded sewer pieces um, there. And you also have one on the uh, birch books as well. I love these shingled roofs. These are, these were fun to make. And then these lovely designs right here. And once again, these mini windows are just so it's just so well made. We even have a nice little uh, double chimney up top. Um, yeah, it's just a really great set. Here's the side. And this one also has a back balcony with a nice little flower pot garden. Or just flowers on the, on the balcony with some fancy railings. The door going out to it. You do have a back door that with some nice stairs that lead down to this little pumpkin patch right here and then of course you have this little uh this little door this little like back door which if you open it this is where you actually store the ladder and you just kind of stuff the ladder in there there it does go in a specific place but that's where you're supposed to sort of store it so let's get into this little set right here let's take off the uh the back part and look at this so you can see there's a lovely bed this is way bigger than the one in the birch bookstore a uh, very nice pillow there are no studs to fit the minifigures like to snap them on so that's a bit of a downside but it's okay you have this very cute little lamp a flower and a little purple vase a very nice curved dresser and a lovely painting of what appears to be the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, as you can see, if you were to place this back on, this little skylight is uh, over the stairwell. And if you want to, you can sort of uh, see this door opens, it can lead out the outdoors. This window can also be propped open, and this skylight above the stairs 
can also be popped open as well. And here is the uh, stairwell going down. I'll give you a better look when I take this top off. And as you can see, those are the steps that go down. They're pretty steep. They take a sharp turn. And let's look at the inside of this lovely house. You have this lovely entrance, like entryway mat right here when the door opens. Um, you are able to keep an umbrella and a hat on these hooks. And I love how they have the umbrella. It's hanging between two of those ball bearings. So it's actually not on a hook. You can just easily take it off and then just, you can easily just put it back on and it just stays. The hat is on a hook. Uh, you have this lovely little pot of tea and teacups with uh, some a Lego newspaper here on the table. Let's take the entire table off so you can see it better. It says the Lego News, the greatest hero ever. The firefighter and a cat stuck in a tree. So, yep, you got that cute little table right there. You got two brown chairs. And you've got a lovely fireplace with the chimneys on the top. You have this very cute, like, old-style cabinet with the drawers beneath the white countertop. And these open to reveal uh, some stuff inside. So as you can see inside the cupboard, very dimly, you have some spices and um, seasonings and some maybe some jams and jellies and stuff sort of just kept in there in the shelves of the cabinet. You also have this thing that I don't know what it is. It looks like you're supposed to put like a cup underneath it and stuff comes out. I'm still not quite entirely sure what that's supposed to be. But yeah, you got like a very cute little cabinet with condiments and stuff. And these can close up. Uh, moving on, you have a lovely picture of a ship. You have a very nice, uh, nice couch seat right by the bay window so that you can sit and look out, which is very lovely. And if we turn this around, you can see there is the back door to the outside. And over here is the door to the basement. And there are steps that go down to it. So let me take off this entire top part of the build. And here are the steps that go down into the basement. Now, when you open up this, <laughs> when you open up that back door to store the ladder, you're really supposed to put the ladder on that single stud right over there so that it's just sitting right there. Um, so those are the steps. It has holes in it because those are what basement steps usually are. You have like a bag or something on this little bench down here, some shears for the flowers out front uh, so that you can garden. They have a little mouse trap. It took me so long to figure out what the heck this is, and then I'm like, oh, this is a wedge of cheese, this is a mouse trap. I guess technically it's not set. This would be probably yeah, there we go. <laughs> so comes a mouse trap. It, uh, there are no mice. I guess it works. <laughs> um yeah, and this is pretty much the base of it. So it's a crawl space basement. Um Definitely not something that you can uh, stand figures up and then put the house on top of it. But yeah, you've got the house is really well built, um, really well designed on the outside and the inside. That you, you know, Lego makes a lot of space, they use a lot of space um, for all these little rooms. They really don't like waste any bricks. Like, there isn't really any thing to add on because you can't because Lego has added on practically everything that uh, that they possibly can and really made that that set just as grand as they could. This uh, little top floor is a little bit hard to get on. And then that goes on top like so. Then you have the lovely top that goes on. And there you are. The bookshop. And the little blue house on the corner. 
So how would I rank this set on the Story Studios LEGO tier system? Uh, I think I will rank this set uh, arm printing. It, this set is just, this was so fun. This isn't my favorite modular build, but it's pretty darn close. Uh, like the just amount of, I don't know, I, I haven't gotten a lot of modular buildings, but I can tell by this set and the design and the architecture and the intricate detail in that it includes, I can tell this is like, this is one of LEGO's best modular buildings. Like it came out this year, LEGO has been up in their game in every single, practically in every single series that they are doing. Maybe everything but Marvel. Um, but <laughs> other than that, this is just uh, so well made. The look of it is great. The only like gripes I truly have is that like back here, it looks awful. Like I would have preferred something more than just a little garden. Maybe I don't know, a tree back here or something. Like this green platform looks very bland. Um, but everything else, like the front of it, the inside of the bookstore, the birch tree out front, the lamppost, the the paintings inside, the even the small little cabinet look, which looks amazing, and the recliner, and most importantly, that little chameleon. Uh, just absolutely amazing set, and yeah, just gives me the feeling of arm printing, that much joy. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Down below, click that bell icon if that bell icon is not on so you can get notified when I post new content. Or you can join the Discord server and you can also get connected into the Story Studios community. And you can also see when I'm doing live streams. I post updates there and I also post new uploads in the Discord server chat. So you can also uh, tune in to all of those. Comment down below what your favorite modular building is. As I said before, I don't have a lot, so uh, I'd like to know what your thoughts on modular buildings are. But this just, I mean, I totally suggest getting this. I, yeah, it's still, I mean, Lego stores are still selling it. I, it's not going to retire anytime soon, but like, I don't know. I think this is a great display piece. I think this is just a beautiful way to start a modular city if you wish uh, as you can see on the back of the box which is pretty cool on the back they suggest put it with the lovely diner set and you also have the um the gas station set right here so i don't know maybe maybe my next um my next uh, lego series collections will be modular buildings and creating my own little city and maybe making some modular building mocks of my own Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. This is Sorry Studios. I'll see you all in the next video.